Welcome to today's event. Today's thank you, dear followers, for tuning in today to our discussion. Today's event, which coincides with the 73rd Republic Day of India, pays tribute not only to the great Mahatma Gandhi and his vast knowledge and humane philosophy. Today's event actually showcases a book on yet another chapter of Gandhi's life, written and discussed in great detail with its author, His Excellency Mr. Abdel Nabi Asharda. To begin today's discussion, we will first hear from the organizers committee, the chairman of the Bahrain India Society, Mr. Abdel Rahman Al Juma. Thank you. Your Excellency, Mr. Payush Srinivata, Ambassador of India to Bahrain and patron of the Bahrain India Society. Mr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Shubana Radhakrishna, our keynote speaker and noted authority on Gandhian thought. Author of the day, Your Excellency, Mr. Ashwana. Distinguished guests who have joined us today for the virtual launch of the four language editions of Mr. Ashwala's noteworthy book on the Mahatma. The Bahrain India Society is honored to be a platform for the multilingual launch of such a work of scholarly relevance as Mr. Shoala's book, Gandhi, his engagement with Islam and the Arab world. That the book launch should take place on such a historic day as India's Republic Day only serves to underscore the importance of Gandhi's message to humanity to this day and also Mr. Shoala's painstaking research and loving tribute to the Mahatma. Today, we get to celebrate the book's content in four languages, Hindi, Urdu, Malayam, and English. The original in Arabic has already been widely read and touched many hearts and minds. It brings to light the universality of Mahatma's philosophy and his eagerness to understand every world religion. This life lesson alone is a great learning in our 21st century world, and it's especially appropriate that we are celebrating this book launch at the Isa Culture Center in Bahrain. The late Amir, Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, Rahmanullah, embodied the spirit of one world, one family, which Bahrain takes to the world and which the Mahatma stressed throughout his life. It's a legacy that continues to this day under the guidance of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence is also in this complex and its work is to inspire humanity's quest for harmony and peace. As the world, as the world works to seek out solutions to solve problems, we all need to renew our faith in the power of compassion and to govern us as demonstrated by Gandhi. The members of Bahrain India Society join me in wishing Mr. Shala success with every edition of this book and many others in many other languages. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Abdurrahman Juma. Next, uh, we are going to hear a few words from His Excellency, the Ambassador of India to Bahrain, Mr. Piyush Jashri Bastava. Thank you. Your Excellency, Mr. Abdul Nabi Al Shola, former minister and Shura Council member, Kingdom of Bahrain, Mr. Abdul Rahman Juma, chairman of Bahrain India Society, Dr. Shobhna Radha Krishna, a renowned Gandhian scholar from India, distinguished guests who have joined online, a very good evening to all of you. It is an honor for me to be present here at the launch of the book, Gandhi, His Engagement with Islam and the World, authored by His Excellency Abdul Nabi Al Shola. The Arabic version of the book was launched in 2018 during 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Today, the book is being launched in four languages, English, Hindi, Urdu, and Malayalam. The author needs no introduction. A distinguished intellectual and Gandhian scholar, His Excellency Abdul Nabi Al Shola is no stranger to India and Gandhi. In his own words, and I quote, my relationship with Gandhi began more than 20 years after his death. In 1969, I visited India when the country was celebrating Mahatma's 100th birthday and stayed there for four years. Thereafter, I enrolled myself in one of the most prestigious colleges of University of Bombay, which is currently known as University of Mumbai. In St. Xavier's College, I chose to study political science and public administration. Owing to the subjects of my choice and the time and place, 
Mahatma Gandhi was a constant presence in my life during my stay in India. If Your Excellency permit, I may add that Gandhi ji has been the constant presence in your life till date, even after your studies in India. Mahatma Gandhi is a name that transcends the bounds of nation states. Lovingly called Bapu in India, his legacy influenced leaders and eminent global personalities alike. In this context, I would like to quote the words of one of the greatest scientific minds of our times, Albert Einstein. I quote, generations to come, it may well be where scarce believe that such a man as this one, ever in flesh and blood, walked upon this earth. Gandhi is a world phenomena whose relevance is eternal, timeless, and universal. Excellencies, distinguished guests. It's a matter of pride that this book on Gandhi in four languages is being launched on the occasion of 73rd Republic Day of India. I extend my greetings to all of you on this occasion. We are also celebrating a milestone in India's journey, Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, commemorating 75th anniversary of India's independence. This book launch is all more significant at a time when India and Kingdom of Bahrain are celebrating the golden jubilee of diplomatic relations. It is a celebration of our shared history rooted in trade, culture, and close people to people connect, which date back thousands of years. I would like to compliment His Excellency Abdul Nabi Al Shola for his contribution in strengthening the bonds of friendship between our countries and peoples, as well as for his in depth research work on the life and thoughts of Mahatma Gandhi. The book travels through various phases of Mahatma Gandhi's life and brings to fore his intellectual heritage and ideals with the core value of harmony and non-violence. The book makes a fascinating reading. I myself have read the book. I'm sure that the readers, not only in India and Bahrain, but across the world, would enjoy reading this brilliant work. May the message of Bapu be the change you want to see in the world continue to inspire and awaken our inner strength. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Now, um, before we go to our next speech uh, by the author himself, and Mr. Ambassador gave a little bit of an introduction, but I will take this opportunity to introduce our author. He's born in the Kingdom of Bahrain. He, the author has visited India for the first time, as mentioned in 1969, during the celebrations commemorating the 100th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. He continued to live in India over the next four years, completing his studies, as mentioned, in the fields of political science and public uh, yeah, administration from the University of Mumbai, St. Xavier's College, all while continuing his practices in his journalistic passions. During his professional career, um, uh, Mr. Abdul Nabi was elected in the board of directors of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, after which he became a member of the advisory council in the Kingdom of Bahrain. From 1995 and until 2005, he was appointed as the Minister of Labor and Social Affairs and later served as Minister of State. After that, he went into the private sector and founded the Bahrain India Society and became the chairman of Dar al Bilad for journalism, publishing, and distribution. The word is for you. Thank you very much for your kind introduction and thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador and Ms. Abdurrahman Juma, the chairman of Bahrain India Society. I'm indeed grateful for Bahrain India, Soci Bahrain India Society for organizing uh, this event to commemorate or to the launch, the launching of the book of my book, uh, Gandhi and his engagement uh, with Islam and the Arab world, which is today will be launched in four languages, English, uh, Hindi, Malayalam, and Urdu. The Hindi language is spoken by all the Indians. It is uh, the national language of India. And uh, Malayalam is spoken in the South and Urdu spoken in the North. And uh, that way we have uh, managed to cover uh, India almost, uh, which is not very easy to do that, yes. you know. Um, uh, the, the book is well received. I'm very happy to see that the original copy, which was intended, the book is addressed to the Arab audience. So I was very delighted to see that it was very well received. And today we are on the third run of printing that book, um, which means that the people really in need 
and they look forward to evoke the ideals and the principles of Mahatma Gandhi, particularly in our area. It, it proves once again that Gandhi is not dead. Gandhi will continue to be living among the people who strive to live peacefully uh, and graciously. So uh, then, uh, then the, uh, I'm equally proud to see that four publishing companies have come forward to publish the book and distribute it in India and beyond. The, I believe that later on you want me to speak more about yes. the, the book and you will Definitely. give a chance now to Dr. Shibana to yes. speak first. Yes. So thank you very much for your excellency for giving us uh, this brief about the book. And um, uh, today our keynote uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Shubana Radhakrishna. Thank you very much for being with us. The word is yours now. Namaskar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I express my gratitude to His Excellency Sri Piyu Srivastavji, Ambassador of India to Kingdom of Bahrain. Mr. Abdul Rahman Muhammad Juma, Chairman of Bahrain India Society, and His Excellency Mr. Al Shola, on this special occasion of the launch of Mr. Al Shola's books, now in four languages, on Mahatma Gandhi, titled Gandhi, His Engagement with Islam and the Arab World, amidst these challenging times of the COVID pandemic. It is a great honor to be here today. And on this special day, when our nation is celebrating the 73rd Republic Day, I convey my greetings to all the distinguished guests who have joined today. I have gone through Dr. Alshola's book and feel that it is an important and timely addition to the scholarly literature on Mahatma Gandhi. I would like to quote from the introduction of the book. There is a class or group of people who do not die. They stay alive and refuse to fade from our memory. Their attitude, principles and vision remain steadfast and shining. These people act as a source of hope and inspiration. They always fulfill the needs of others. Gandhi comes at the forefront of this group of people in our modern age and the most prominent leader and thinker. He has promoted the values of freedom, justice, and tolerance, fought against the ideology of violence, extremism, terrorism, and tyranny, and has succeeded in using peaceful and nonviolent resistance tools to realize his dreams and goals. It was through these tools that Gandhi released his country from the clutches of the British Empire, which was then one of the most powerful countries in the world. Unquote. These, along with many other facts that must be known to the Arab readers and to the world readers, are presented in detail in his erudite book. Gandhiji's philosophy is eternal, universal, and transcends the geographical boundaries of time and space. Gandhiji demonstrated that things start from self. We must become practitioners of whatever we know of Gandhiji to get inspired. There are so many things that he did. A simple practice could be to become self-reliant and lead a simple life. There is a growing universal appreciation of the relevance of Gandhiji's philosophy in the 21st century. Gandhiji's important contribution for a just world is very compelling and relevant to the world today. Mahatma Gandhi is the most powerful visionary and a practical idealist from the first half of the last century whose life is a role model for all of us across the world. But the effort must begin from a point where one is standing. That is what made Mahatma Gandhi's idealist actions practical. And he can be truly called a man of action. It was the action of putting ideas or beliefs into practice more than anything else was the driving force in his life. The answer for Mahatma Gandhi was always found in action. He said, and I quote, an ounce of practice is worth more than tons of preaching, unquote. The life and thoughts of Mahatma Gandhi are intertwined and inseparable. His politics was imbued with his spiritual experiments and his spirituality was tempered by his vision of a nonviolent society. And his constructive work was integral to his politics. The unique practices of Mahatma Gandhi, his control of the palate, 
his fasts, his spinning, his silence and his prayers gave him the internal strength and were as much a part of his politics as of his spiritual life. The ashram community, the, he established four ashrams in his lifetime, through its own practices, affirmed, modified and validated Mahatma Gandhi's ideals and practices and continue to do so even till today. I'm happy to inform you that I was born in Mahatma Gandhi's Seva Gram Ashram in Varda in Maharashtra and imbibed the Gandhian way of life and continue to do so even to, till today. My father had spent 21 years in two of such ashrams in Sabarmati and Seva Gram. Mahatma Gandhi used to start and end his day with prayers. In the ashrams, every activity and program used to begin and end with prayers in which prayers from all the religions were sung. Gandhiji said that all the religions point to the same truth. Therefore, one should study and learn the essence of each of the religions in an attitude of humble friendship and with reverence to the people practicing different religions. Gandhiji's unshakable faith in universal brotherhood is reflected in his fascination for the hymns from the Bhagavad Gita, Bible, and the Holy Quran that proclaim the power of truth. In all the all religious prayers in the Gandhi ashrams, Al-Fatiha and Surah Al-Ikhlas used to be recited daily in the morning and evening prayers, along with other prayers. And I have grown up reciting these and continue to do so. I take the liberty to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Kulahu Allahu Ahad. Allahu Samad. Lam Yalid. Balam Yulad. Valam Yakullahu Kufavan Ahad. According to my understanding, Mahatma Gandhi's life was an epic of faith and endeavor. His faith was in truth, the ultimate reality of truth, and he endeavored to attain it through non-violence throughout his life till the very last breath. The deeper the faith, the greater was the endeavor. Gandhiji said, truth is God. Faith in truth led Mahatma Gandhi to two other realization. If God is omnipresent, and if each human being were an aspect of God, then each person was capable of truth, of being good and doing good. Today, in the field of international conflict resolution, People are interested in the effectiveness of peaceful means for ending disputes, as demonstrated by Mahatma Gandhi, compared with the use of force or violence. In peace-building contexts, scholars and practitioners are seeking to integrate authentic, indigenous, and local cultural methods of conflict analysis and intervention. People are finding inspiration in Gandhi's ideals and his lifelong efforts of peace building and conflict resolution through interfaith dialogues and harmony. Throughout his life, Mahatma Gandhi engaged in finding solutions through interreligious and intercultural dialogues. Gandhiji had deep respect for world religion and developed lifelong friendships with people from different religions. He took time to study, reflect, and engage with different faiths and faith communities. During his lifetime, Gandhiji read the Holy Quran more than once and also many books on the Quran and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It made a deep impression on him that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, often fasted and prayed and that he had revelations not in moments of ease and luxurious living, but when he fasted and prayed, kept awake for nights together and would be on his feet at all hours of the night as he received revelations. Mahatma Gandhi cultivated respect for Islam. To Gandhiji, the central teaching of the Quran remained that of peace. He regarded Islam as a religion of peace. He found Muslims to be brave, generous, and trusting. He sought to gain Muslim friendship through love. His ultimate remedy was to deal with the wrong, but not to hurt the wrongdoer. Thus to him, the ultimate answer lay in the concept of live and let live, or mutual forbearance, tolerance, and compassion in life. He said that this is the lesson he had learned from the Quran. During his childhood, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was influenced by the strength and patriotism of Sheikh Mehtab. 
he had heard the events from the life of the first Khalifa and the culture of Islam. In South Africa, he worked with Dada Abdullah, a rich merchant for a case which was one of the biggest cases that was being fought between two cousins in South Africa then. Every evening they would have a discussion on religion and Gandhiji got a fair amount of practical knowledge of Islam. After Gandhiji forgave Meer Alam for attacking him, Meer Alam worked very closely with him as did the other prominent Muslim merchants in the non-violent resistance in South Africa. Imam Sahab stayed with him in, the, in his Phoenix settlement in Durban and was Gandhiji's companion in his struggle both in South Africa and India. Mahatma Gandhi, especially after coming back to India and after he started the non-cooperation movement, Abbas Tayyabji, he appointed Abbas Tayyabji to replace him as a leader of the important Salt March in May 1930 after Gandhiji's arrest. Mahatma Gandhi worked closely with Muhammad Ali and his brother Maulana Shaukat Ali during the Khilafat movement. Dr. Hakim Ajmal Khan and Dr. M.A. Ansari were close to Gandhiji in working for Kamin al Hamni, so were Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, Dr. Zakir Hussain, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and other prominent leaders of India. Bibi Amtus Salam hailed from a prominent Muslim family and worked with Mahatma Gandhi in Noakhali and in all other places which, and worked closely for establishing Kamin al Hamni. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, also known as Bashar Khan, was a close associate of Gandhiji and worked to establish brotherhood and harmony in Asia. During the Gandhi centenary in 1969, that's when you had come to India, Dr. Al Sholaji, at the invitation of the government of India, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan visited India. Instead of accepting the Indian government's hospitality, he chose to stay with our family in New Delhi, and we have fond memories of serving him. During his stay in India, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan traveled to many parts of the country. He received tremendous reception and used to have civilian honors throughout the country. He also was gifted with honor bag as contribution to carry on his work. On his return to Delhi, Basha Khan gave that bag to my mother to keep it safely till his return. After the stay of four months, when the time came for his return to the frontier province, Basha Khan asked mother to hand him over the bag with money, which my mother did promptly. Basha Khan was engrossed in counting each note and the coin. On completion of the counting, he told my mother that there is one rupee less in the bag. My mother was shocked to hear this and requested Basha Khan to count again. So Basha Khan, when he counted again, this time he found everything was fine. There was so much happiness on the face of Basha Khan and my mother heaved a sigh of relief and smiled at him. He, Basha Khan said, daughter, this is Bapu's money. So one has to be very careful. Gandhiji used to collect thousands of rupees as funds for his work from public as donation, but he accounted for every single penny every day in the evening. This habit of Mahatma Gandhi we should all imbibe for transparency and accountability. How does the young generation remember Mahatma Gandhi today in the world as someone who led India to freedom through Satyagraha or a revolutionary who has made an impact and influenced people across the globe as a, or as a prophet who warned the world leaders that there is enough for man's needs but not for man's greed or a person in a loincloth striding across India to mass worship of the ordinary people or a bespectacled figure intently writing original words which added up to more than 100 volumes or perhaps the saintly figure on the spinning wheel. To me, Gandhiji is not a collection of dry thoughts and maxims, but a living man who reminds one of the highest levels to which a human being can evolve, containing the best from the past. He lived in the present, yet for the future. Hence the timelessness of his highest thoughts. Much of what he said and wrote was for the solution of immediate problems, some were for the inner guidance of the individuals. He fashioned his ideas as tools during his experiments in the laboratory of his own life. The Gandhian idea is also compatible with the view that humankind is undergoing gradual moral evolution. While conflict is seen as inevitable, in fact, not always undesirable, violence as the result of conflict is not regarded as inevitable. Simply put, Human beings do have the capacity to resolve conflicts non-violently. This might be difficult, but it is not impossible, libera lib impossible. Liberation from a violent society is seen as requiring many decades or longer, but it is not an impossible ideal. I have traveled 
all across the world to uh, give lectures on Gandhi ji. And during the celebration of the 150th year, I also happened to give virtual talks on Gandhi ji. So in pa Palestine, there are, there are many families who have named their son as Gandhi in the fond hope that they would grow up and work for peace. Mayor Sami al Bekai of Ebel al Saki village of Lebanon used to be a primary school teacher and he taught his students about Gandhiji. His village is known as the model of peace and non violence. In Saudi Arabia, people wanted to learn more about the Gandhian method of peaceful conflict resolution and the contribution of his wife, Kasturba Gandhi. So, like this, there are so many anecdotes which I would like to share, but at this point, I would like to Firstly, congratulate Mr. Alshola for authoring the book and inviting me for the book launch. My thanks are also to His Excellency, Ambassador of India, the Chairman of Bahrain India Society. But above all, my thanks are to all of you for being present today. Namaskar. Thank you very much, Dr. Shubhana Radha Krishna for for your words and for um, the wonderful uh, contributions from your <clears throat> side to this event. Before we start the discussion into the book, uh, we want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the significance of today. So I will go to um, uh, the ambassador of India, Mr. Piyush Srivastava. Can you please uh, tell me the significance of uh, the um, Republic Day of India specifically, that is the 73rd this year? Yeah, as uh, thank you, uh, you know, today we are celebrating 73rd Republic Day of India. This is the day in which India was established as the largest democratic republic on earth. It was this day in 1950 when we uh, set into operation our constitution. So people celebrate this day with great fervor. Uh, like today, uh, yesterday evening, uh, His Excellency, President of India, gave message, yeah. address to the nation. And morning we had uh, a, the, our armed forces uh, paraded. And also yes. there was a lot of display of uh, diverse cultures across India. So this is the day where we celebrate our cultural diversity, our heritage, as well as the economic, socio-cultural, industrial advancement. Amazing. Um, another thing that um, has been known for many years is the relationship between Bahrain and India, the deep-rooted uh, relationships between them in all kinds of fields. What can you tell us about the exchange of culture between Bahrain and India? How is that relationship ongoing? I think uh, we are sitting here at the launch of this book on Mahatma Gandhi by His Excellency Abdul Nabi Al Shola. The book in Arabic version is has been widely read and uh, the English version is also, I think, out for about a year and it's in the market. So it tells uh, the how uh, popular is the book and it's also a, one of the, uh, I would say, uh, this is also a reflection of our deep rooted bilateral ties. Uh, His Excellency's interest in India, in thoughts and ideals of Gandhiji, which led him and uh, uh, encouraged him to write this book. Yeah. Uh, so this is the, so our relations between our two countries are deep rooted, as you yourself has said. Have said, people from uh, two countries have been traveling to each other since millennia. Yeah. Earlier, there were traders which used to go to each other's country and when they used to come back, they used to bring the elements of culture with them. Yes. You can see the uh, elements of art, culture, food, spices, yeah. even architecture mm -hmm. uh, in each other's country, which has uh, imprints of uh, in India of Bahrain, Bahrain of uh, and vice versa. <laughs> And this year we are celebrating the Golden Jubilee, which is a celebration of our deep rooted historical ties. Yeah. Uh, but our two countries are committed in uh, strengthening our cultural ties as per contemporary tie, yes. uh, times. Uh, we have signed a cultural exchange program, which is a, a four to five year roadmap between the two countries mm -hmm. uh, during the visit of Honorable Prime Minister of India, Shri Narendra Modi, in August 2019. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's amazing. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, one of the big signs of uh, the huge community um, uh, of Indians in Bahrain and also the um, exchange of information, not just in cultural aspects, but also in business, is um, also seen in the foundation of a society that is specifically um, dedicated to the Bahrain Indian community. Uh, Mr. Abdurrahman Jum'a, thank you so much um, uh, for being here today. And from you, we would like to know as the chairperson, how did the society come to be existing? <clears throat> thank you. It's a non-profit organization. Its aim is to improve the culture, business, uh, industry between the two countries. It was set up by uh, Mr. His Excellency Mr. Abdel Rishad in 2007. Uh, we have now two, about 250 members. Uh, and as I said, the, the aim is to increase the business. Uh, recently, uh, we have Bahrain India Society with AMCHAM, the American uh, Bahrain uh, Business Society, have set up um, a seminar in which we are trying to attract uh, Indian businesses, industries to set up in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, and the aim is to use the American FTA agreement. Yeah. So that's one of our aim and vice versa. We are also trying to convince Bahrains to invest in the, in the industry in India. Yeah. So this is generally the idea, yes. promote the two businesses, culture and others. Yes. And Bahrain is one of the best countries to do so um, because of these deep-rooted relations. What can you tell us about um, the political, the business, all of the kinds of relations that have always been existing between the two uh, countries? Well, the relation between Bahrain and India goes way, way back, apparently thousands of years, uh, from the archaeological finding they have recently found. But saying this, in the modern history, I mean, all our families, our grandfathers and Bahrain, they, they, there's trade between India and Bahrain and vice versa. We have Indian families living in Bahrain. Uh, they became Bahrainis. We have Bahraini and Saudi uh, families living in, in India and, and uh, Kuwaiti as well. Yeah. So, so, of course, this is, has, uh, has brought together the two uh, communities, yeah. Indians, Bahrainis, and that's, I think, why we feel so easy to work with the, with the Indian business people and Indian people, and this is, I think, reflected as the overall uh, in Bahrain between Definitely. the two societies. Definitely. Thank you so much yeah. for that. If I can please add a little Mr. bit, I, mean, I think uh, Excellency has summed up very beautifully the our relations mm -hmm. and the efforts which we are doing in these times to further diversify externalities. I just want to share some of the figures yeah. uh, with your permission. Uh, yes, uh, we, we did a lot of focused B2B meetings, which of course, for last two years has been mostly virtual, mm -hmm. but the results are very positive. Uh, I will say the bilateral trade figures for last year have crossed 1.1 billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is a significant increase compared yes. to past years. And also investments uh, on both sides have increased. Yes. Uh, Indian investment uh, here is, I think India is the sixth largest investor with about 1.3 billion US dollars. And uh, similarly, Bahraini investment has also yes. increased. And I'm sure with the support of Bahraini India Society, mm -hmm. we will be holding a lot of events to further extend them these relations. Yes, definitely. Um, that's a confirmation of the strength of these relationships. And uh, now we come to the man of the hour, the author of uh, this wonderful uh, book that uh, brings in a new uh, flavor to uh, the history of Mahatma Gandhi, um, the philosopher that is known, the humanitarian in him. You uh, wrote about him very differently. Um, Your Excellency, Mr. Abdinabi Shara, first off, I want to ask you, how did uh, the idea or the concept to write this book arise? Uh, thank you very much indeed. And also I'm thankful to Dr. Shubhana Radhakrishna. She has saved me the time to talk about Mahatma Gandhi. She said aptly and explained his thoughts and his approach to issues. Uh, you know, as the ambassador said earlier, my, my first uh, 
contact, I'll call it, it was uh, with the Mahatma Gandhi, it was uh, in the celebration of his 100th, uh, 100th anniversary. Yes. And since then I've been taking interest, but the main thing came about is when I thought and what everybody thought that his, his thoughts and his principles of nonviolence and peaceful solutions, coexistence, became more needed in our region than anywhere else in the world because our region since then and for many many years was, was engulfed in wars uh, conflicts etc and there was a need to evoke those principles to tell people mm -hmm. that disputes and differences can be solved through peaceful means and we have the example of Mahatma Gandhi who achieved his objectives he achieved the independence of his country. He took the jewel of the British Empire from the crown of the British Empire and gave independence to his people without firing one single uh, bullet, you know. Yes. So achieved it through peacefulness. So our people and the whole humanity should know that there is no need to resort to violence and uh, and wars, and we should be against any act of violence or terrorism. Yeah. So more so, his, that's why I thought I have to bring to the people of our region here those stories of success in implementing peaceful means, non-violence means, to, of which the Mahatma promoted and uh, adhered to in all the times. Right, right. Well, um... When when we when I started reading the book, um, the way it was divided um, gave you actually an idea about where you're going to flow within the book. The table of contents gives you about this book. Can you tell us about the book from your point of view? The book traced uh, the life of uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi from the beginning, mm -hmm. from his birth, etc. Uh, but focusing on two or three things in mind yeah. is to contribute to the development of more understanding between the people of India and the people of this part of the world mm -hmm. by bringing the contribution of Gandhi to such relationship. Yes. I have uh, brought him, I focused rather on his relationship with this region, his understanding, his appreciation, his contact, his interaction with Muslims, and Islam. Yeah. Basically, the message is Gandhi can never be anti Muslims and Muslim in any way or anti any other uh, religion. He, he believed in the oneness of God. I think uh, Dr. Radha Krishna explained uh, that properly. So that was the message. I also wanted to mention to the people that we all, we have all common platforms to move from. <laughs> from any religion, from any nationalities. And Gandhi, as mentioned earlier, Gandhi always looked to the one Lord, like we all look at the same one Lord. Humanity is the same. That was the second aim that I wanted to give. Thirdly, I wanted also to pay back to India. The gratitude, the hospitality <coughs> I got there, the, the, the education I got there, I should pay back by promoting a, a, a world leader, a man who is appreciated yes. by every nation and in every country. I've traced it, and if you wish, I can, I can, uh, I can stand on one or two points. When he came back from England after he completed his uh, law studies, he could not find a suitable job for him. Okay. He got only one case during his time. He came in eighteen. Uh, 91 uh, to back to India and he got only one case okay and that was for a Muslim also and when he went to South Africa he worked with a Muslim uh, company called Dada Abdullah and his brother you know okay. and they invited him to come as their consultant you know when they invited him they invited him to enter history yeah. this is the time from unknown lawyer he went to, to become an international hero. The event of uh, him going to Pretoria the same year when he was there, and he was thrown from the train station. He <coughs> first class, but 
they thrown him out of the cell of the, of the train to the platform, mm -hmm. okay, with his uh, suitcase. This is where a hero was uh, created, mm -hmm. a, a defender of human rights and a, a defender of equality, defender of justice. Mm -hmm. This is the man who, who became a promoter of justice and defender of these ideals throughout um, his life. That is one uh, one one pose or one so one one would like to stand. Secondly, I would like to refer to when he went back to India, mm -hmm. and at that time, that was the time of the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, yeah. or as they call it, the Ottoman uh, the, the the Khilafat uh, of the uh, Ottoman Empire. Okay, and the Muslims of India were uh, agitated and opposed and. Uh, and resisted and fought uh, against the British, demanding that the British should not be part of uh, demolishing the, 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 the Khilafat in Istanbul or yeah. in Turkey. They feel that this is, the, this is the, 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 the rule of the descendants of the prophets and the, and the princes of faithful Amir al-Mu'mineen at that time. And Gandhi has understood their sentiment and came close to them. And he led the Khilafat movement. You know, the Khilafat movement, you know, one third of the all Muslims were involved in that movement. Indians, and at that time it was the British India, India, Pakistan, yes. Bangladesh, etc. Mm -hmm. One third of the Muslims there. So in so Mahatma Gandhi, all of a sudden, we have seen him that the leader of one third of the Muslim uh, of of the Muslims, yeah. never happened in history yeah. that any any anything happened like that. Neither for the Muslims or or any other yeah. uh, faith. And uh, I think the last point I would like to to come to it is towards the end, the conclusion mm -hmm. of the book, when the Gandhi has achieved his objectives by by uh, uh, gaining the independence of India. But unfortunately, he was in, in a pain to see that he was unable to fulfill the other objectives of keeping his country together, his people together. So he found, unfortunately, the people he loved are fighting with each other and killing uh, each other. So I think it's a, one of a, of a dramatic situation. Like all the epic heroes, Gandhi also was uh, one of them. And uh, the irony that uh, in the whole thing is that uh, he was killed by a fanatic, you know, uh, Gotse, his name also, he's a, he's a fanatic Hindu. We have fanatics all over, you know, who has assassinated him. But my conclusion in the book that the bullets of this assassin, of the killer, did not kill Gandhi, actually. Um, uh, he, the, his ideals, his uh, principles, his philosophy yeah. are remaining the same, even more important and more relevant than before. Uh, the killer was, uh, was, was executed, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, there are also many like him all over. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are, we should fight them with the same tool that, that Gandhi has promoted, those who use faith and religion. Yeah to give themselves the right to kill each other because the killer of Gandhi has thought that, that, that God, or he read in the secret books that he should fulfill the wish of God and kill the same man. So this was the conclusion of the book. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Abdin I mean, you talked about it uh, already, but the ideology of uh, Gandhi is um, um, really the source of many uh, intellectuals and many writers and authors and scientists even, and within the humanitarian uh, field specifically, you yourself are in political or studied political science. So you know how intensified this humanitarian outlook he had as a lawyer, not just as a lawyer, but as a humanitarian himself really impacted a lot of people. What uh, within your um, research uh, phenomenon for this book is one of the most memorable uh, things that you have read or seen uh, from your perspective? I think one of the most important thing in my mind that Mahatma Gandhi has strived and has, uh, has succeeded and adhered to introducing ethics to politics, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, uh, we all know uh, that, uh, that politics, uh, one of the last ingredients uh, needs is uh, being, uh, uh, being ethical, you know, unfortunately that uh, remains uh, 
uh, truth, but what Mahatma Gandhi introduced that element, you know, while he was actually fighting for the poor and the downtrodden, the laborers, the farmers, etc. But he never really became closer to being communist or socialist, because I think he found that in those two ideologies that, that the individual can be sacrificed for the state, the one person can be sacrificed for the group, and Mahatma Gandhi did not believe in that. He put the individual on the top of his priority. The most important thing is the individual. The individual is the core of the society, whereas in such, uh, uh, in such ideologies, the individual can be sacrificed, millions of people sacrificed. He fought for protecting the life of everyone and not to be an, um, uh, something to be consumed for, for politics. However, while he did not come uh, close to, uh, to communism and socialism, he promoted the social responsibility. Today, everybody now promoting that. Today, everybody now, especially yeah. at the time when, when Corona started, they said, we have ignored the social responsibility of the state, of the individuals, and of the corporation. Today's theme is the social responsibility. This is an idea. He has himself promoted from the beginning when nobody paid attention to. Yeah. When, when uh, you read the book, or uh, when we read the book, um, the way you convey stories uh, of, of um, instances that he has gone through, um, there are some uh, instances that are historically relevant, uh, like, for instance, um, uh, uh, the uh, prison story in Pretoria and different other stories. From your point of view, um, what is the most uh, significant that, that's memorable in your mind um, that made you decide to write this book? Uh, I, I, I think, as I said, I, th I think this is the time when really he turned, the moment when he turned from an unknown lawyer to a hero, to a fighter for justice and for equality in South Africa when he was thrown from the train to the platform there, and he spent the whole night in cold and darkness, you know. This is where a hero born, a fighter for freedom and for uh, the dignity of humanity and human being. I think that's one of the striking uh, moments, I think, in, in, in the whole process. Uh, as I said, the second one is when a man who is who is very, very, very committed, uh, Hindu, but very respectful of all other religion. He become the leader of a, of a Muslim movement, yes. a huge uh, Muslim movement. Mm -hmm. And of course, the third, which I would, is that his assassination, mm -hmm. which, uh, which, which, which gives the whole story of how the human beings, how much his contribute, how much he was ready, because he was told to take care of himself, that many now many threats are coming, yeah. but he refused. The time he spent in trying to to protect and the, uh, uh, the unity of his people, the unity of the country, so much of uh, of, of stories that one can see how much this man has has spent, uh, how much he contributed, how much he spent of effort and life, and he spent his life and for that. The, to maintain the unity of people. Today, we all call for the unity, the world unity of a human beings. Still, that's the same. Yes. Yeah? Um, before I ask you my last question, was there an element in the book uh, during research that was a surprise to you, a piece of information that you felt uh, was new to you and surprised you, took you aback? Yes, indeed, in his boyhood, how much uh, the man has uh, fought to, to maintain, and that's a story to other human beings, to maintain what he believed in, you know. Mm -hmm. I have not read as much uh, of a person that he was prepared to defend his belief, what he believed in, at the same time to be really an open-minded, to open his heart and mind to, the, to, to, to everyone. I, have, I was even uh, 
I did not know to the extent he had that did not know before the extent in which he was he was intensely involved with the uh, with the Muslim issues mm-hmm. and with the Muslims themselves, you know, with their issues. Where finally he was he was he was uh, he was accused of standing or or uh, or uh, standing beside or looking after the interest of the Muslims at the at the cost of the of the Hindus, mm-hmm. his own people, but he he wanted to to become part and stand with justice and wherever uh, it is. I was also surprised to see, or I was uh, amazed to see how much he supported the Arab cause, okay. especially the cause of the uh, the Arab Palestinians or the Arab Israeli conflict from the beginning. You know, he was put under very heavy pressure from the Zionist movement. They wanted from, from him to, to, to give a statement saying that the, uh, the Jews has the right for, for a land in Palestine. He, come, he, he has his famous article, which he wrote. When the, in the Middle East, every day almost you find one media or the other referring to, to, that, uh, to that article, yeah. which he wrote. and he. He was believing strongly. It was actually to, not to the interest of his cause, because at that time the influence of Zionism, etc., in the West, and all that will be at the cost of his fight for the freedom of his country. Yes. But he did not compromise. Mm-hmm. He stood with what he think, what he thought that it is justice, and he, he defended that justice. Yes. Amazing. My final question to you, Your Excellency, is. Do you feel like you have um, have known Gandhi now in a different way after writing this book? Do you feel like you have a new kind of relationship with him? Do you understand um, his character in a different way? Indeed, yes. I have spent, of course, uh, four years of uh, research uh, for the original book uh, in Arabic. And as uh, I started, I mean, so many books, volumes of books that I have read and uh, I have seen the, the real uh, Gandhi as most important thing, the human uh, being, the one who is more concerned with the humanity, with the human uh, issues. It did not bother him anything like the political gain. Yeah. You know, sometimes in the struggle and in politics, people always also fight for political gains for themselves or for their country. His concern was, uh, the human issues, the humanity of uh, of of the whole uh, issue uh, in 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 life itself. So I think that is uh, I came to know him more. Than, even that at the stage of translating uh, yeah. the book, I have to re go to reread to go through the result. Uh, luckily, I don't know Malayalam or Hindi <laughs> or or Urdu. That's why. It was very easy to, to, to publish those. I could I did not um, have the I didn't have the ability to read, but English it took also very long time to research to go back to the sources um, uh, or references that I had from Arabic mm. texts like his uh, his book, uh, which is uh, 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 my experiments with the truth. It was translated into Arabic. Yeah. So for the Arabic book, you know I. I, re, I used the Arabic uh, reference book, the yeah. translation. Yeah. And when it came to the translation of, of it in English, I have to go back to the uh, original um, the English. Text. Yes. That's, that's a very um, vast field that you went into. And from language to language, it's like jumping from culture to culture. That's indeed the thing that I'm really, once again, to say I'm very grateful that uh, for the ambassador, His Excellency the Ambassador, yes. for joining us, and Sir Abdurrahman, and for you and for Dr. Shubana Radhakrishna for uh, joining me uh, today uh, in this occasion. And uh, it coincided with a wonderful day, the Republic Day of India. This is the day when the foundation of the greatest, largest democracy in the world was established. Eh? The, the Republic Day, you know, this is what the constitution was promulgated. The, democratic constitution of secular India. Uh, I always will say that it is. it will remain India. India will be democratic uh, and secular and uh, free, you yes. know. Exactly. 
Thank you so much for having this discussion with us and congratulations on today's launch. Um, uh, dear viewers, uh, we also want to give uh, some time and space to you to ask some questions if uh, you have any. So we have a time for a couple of questions from the people watching us or from the people in the studio, of course. I think we have uh, uh, hundreds of uh, people who follow us, but I think the, 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 the invitation before did not, I think, provides for, for them to participate, only <laughs> to enjoy listening well, to this. Well, any questions that you might have uh, sent there, we will be able to see. And before um, we end the event today, we're going to event the online uh, session now. And before we are on the, the local session, um, uh, His Excellency Mr. Abdel Nabi al will be handing over the copies in all the languages to our distinguished guests in the studio. May I, Mr. Ambassador? This is the. Thank you very please. much and many congratulations. No, 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 no. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Abdurrahman. Shukran. Thank, Thank you very much again. Thank you.